Should governments provide free health care for all? Since nothing in life is free, who pays and how? Is it even the government's job to provide health care? The answers to these questions may seem straightforward at first, but there are some important considerations to make. All this and more on today's edition of Tariff. Today is Tuesday, July 30th, AD 2024. This is the Africa Review in 5, written by Mark Christopher and presented by Yamikani Katunga. Should the government provide free health care for all? Over the last 10 years, there's been a great deal of discussion and debate concerning the recently adopted national health insurance legislation here in South Africa. One of the many overriding concerns of the NHI bill is its hefty price tag and how to pay for it in a country with a limited tax base. According to a recent article, every tax-paying South African will have to add an additional 30,000 rands in annual taxes to implement NHI. The discussions and debates will no doubt continue over the cost and other contentious aspects of the NHI. One recent court case this past week calls certain provisions of the legislation unconstitutional. So, NHI will now face its first constitutional court appearance and may have to be significantly amended. From a biblical perspective, what should Christians think of nationalized healthcare bills like NHI? The simple answer is, the Bible does not directly address the issue of healthcare and the associated political issues surrounding it. Yet, that said, there are some general biblical principles that can be applied to this topic. Key among them are matters related to the role of government, economics, and the personal responsibility of the Christian for his or her own personal health prevention. A necessary question that every believer should ask is what is the role of God-ordained government? The real question here is whether God intends for government to provide cradle-to-grave health care for the people of any nation. Romans 13 verses 1 through 7 and 1 Peter 2 verses 13 through 15 while commanding submission to one's government, do so within a defined purpose of government of providing a safe and secure environment protected from enemies, both foreign and domestic. There are various facets to this, but it is legitimate to ask whether God intends for government to micromanage the health of every citizen. Or is it better to provide an environment where everyone has access to some form of health care? The problem with government-run healthcare is that cumbersome bureaucracies are created and serve as an obstacle to cost-effectiveness and efficiency, all of which impacts timely medical treatment. Invariably, these governmental bureaucracies are forced to ration healthcare, deciding who gets what treatment and when. A former member of my own congregation was denied medical procedures at a local government hospital and died because of this. As part of Christian stewardship, the cost does have to be considered and is not unimportant. An estimate for NHI from 2010 put the cost at around 257 billion rands annually. With inflation factored into that original estimate, the cost is now over 470 billion a year, with some independent estimates placed at 859 billion a year. Is this feasible in SA's current economic climate? Is it sustainable over the long haul as prices continue to climb? With this kind of money at stake, it does have to be asked what safeguards will ensure there is no governmental corruption and squandering of these funds on politicians and vendors concerned only with self-interest? What are the alternatives then, some may ask? There are always alternatives. Any alternative that is entertained will always have trade-offs in a fallen world. In the instance of SA's government, they could significantly cut the costs of what is presently proposed by reforming and renovating existing state-run hospitals and clinics. This could include privatizing the management and day-to-day -day operations of these facilities for better efficiency and improved care for those who make use of them. 
Tax incentives and other benefits could be offered to medical practitioners, private clinics, and hospitals that are in poorer areas. There are many other alternatives that independent think tanks could propose to the government, if the government would listen. From a biblical perspective, one thing is clear. The Bible promotes personal health care responsibility without guaranteeing good health for all. In 1 Corinthians 6 verses 19 through 20, the Apostle Paul reminds the Corinthians that as believers, our bodies are the temple, that is, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, every believer has a stewardship to maintain his or her body to the degree that they can. For this reason, adequate rest, proper nutrition, exercise, and other health preventions play an important role in healthcare. Throughout the Bible, we see wounds being bound and topical creams, oil, and wine being applied to various medical situations. Those in antiquity used what they had available at that time to try and alleviate pain and suffering and promote good health. Paul even advised Timothy in 1 Timothy 5 verse 23 to take some wine for his stomach's sake. Apparently, Timothy had a stomach issue which the wine of the day might help. None of us are promised good health forever, but we can take some individual preventative measures while avoiding detrimental habits like overeating, smoking, drugs, and inadequate rest. As the old saying goes, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Even though scripture promotes individual responsibility for one's health, it bears repeating that in a fallen and sin-filled world, there is no easy answer to the universal health care question. There are also no promises for a long, healthy life for all in equal measure. Job reminds us in chapter 14 verse 1 and verse 5 that Man who was born of woman is short-lived and full of turmoil. Since his days are determined, the number of his months is with you, and his limits you have set so that he cannot pass. So, as you pursue individual health care, bear in mind that care for the physical body serves as a compelling illustration for spiritual soul care in preparation for eternal life to come. After all, what does it profit a man if he should gain the whole world, including good health and fitness, and yet lose his own soul? And that's it for the Africa Review in 5 on this Tuesday, July 30th, in the year of our Lord 2024. Comment with your thoughts on the issue of national health care. And don't forget to subscribe to the Missionary Minds podcast on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts. I'm Yamikani Katunga. Be not wary in well-doing.